Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. It's Professor Mark Leone here. Today we're going to look at Van Gogh. We're going to look at it, spend 15 minutes with and look at his drawings. Uh, if you haven't had the pleasure of getting to Amsterdam in the Netherlands to see the Van Gogh Museum, please do. It is a world-class uh, space and it is a treat to see the oeuvre of many of his works, painting works, as well as catalog of his drawing works, which I uh, also loved. And I got to see a David Hockney show down in the lower level um, that was quite extensive too as well. So I got a big, big treat out of all of that. But today we'll focus on 15 minutes with the wonderful drawings. And we'll look at quite a few landscapes. Here we see a landscape in charcoal on paper and of course classic sort of uh, what we think of stereotypically, if you will, uh, of Dutch or Netherlandish uh, water re reclaiming uh, windmills, and they are fabulously rendered here in all their glory and their engineering. And we see the the water land that um, he was exploring and lived lived in at least part of his life. And we see this beautiful composition flow in through here. I love the cross diagonals of this idea. Right, and then we have this big icon here, but then we have the also the cross diagonal going through here, and he breaks it up again with a reflection. So we get this vertical here, and then another dominant vertical that gives us pointing back to our main focus, which is right in through there. So one of the one of the things that I love about Van Gogh of, of many different things was his. Um, brilliance in composition. We all know about his emotional mastery or therein lack of mastery of his own emotions, right? But putting it on to and recording it for the world for posterity to see um, emotionally, but also his use of composition I think was uh, extensively brilliant. Here we see a couple of self-portraits probably in preparation for a painting and you see many of the stylistic things that we come to think of in, in Van Gogh. A little awkward in anatomy, um, not quite completely mastered and learned, but he substitutes that for emotional um, power. And we start to see that with the stare, the gaze at the viewer, and we start to see the rhythmic staccato quality of the mark making, which we'll see all over his career in painting, as well as his landscape painting. But I will also show you that in, in more of the drawings too uh, as well. So some, some charcoal tone and then some very bold, confident marks to render out some of the features of the face and the head in the composition here of the self-portrait. Here we have, we see a, a farming group uh, burning weeds and gleaning or cropping here, but uh, the title was Burning Weeds and see a woman in what is a barrel looking relatively uh, unexcited about that prospect and then we have a young girl over here and then the major focus is the, the male doing doing the work in through here so a very horizontal uh, type composition so what do I mean by that we have some very strong broad areas here horizontally we have a horizontal here then we have uh, a few of the verticals here the secondary vertical and then the diminished child here at the lower end repeated by some of the stalks of the trees and then we have this strong horizontal but then that's broken up really beautifully by what is either cloud or maybe a, a some kind of forestry fire a purposeful fire perhaps not sure but we get this idea coming through and all the way pushed over this is also this is i believe either a litho it might might be intaglio and etching but um, it, it responds well to drawing but this beautiful breaking up curve really gets us back down and through to the to the figures across there so uh, and then we get classic van gogh sort of mark making staccato line um, a little ha uh, uh, harking back to a little bit of uh, leonardo and these beautiful wintry trees and to all make a scene of which is pretty fairly a pretty bleak existence for these for these individuals so here we see a lovely study of a young girl multiple times by Van Gogh, and you can see this, the beautiful rhythmic mark making that he uh, is becoming known, uh, well, uh, not quite known during his time, but with that we start to see the rich dark tone of the shadows, the intermediary rhythms 
in between and the beautiful contouring that he gets in some of his marks, this kind of shape and angular edging. This harks back to his use of the Charles Bark plates that he used a little bit to learn to teach himself how to draw. And that was a self-teaching uh, program developed by Charles Bark. Charles, and I believe it's B-A-R-Q-U-E. And then Jerome, I believe Jerome was part of the, uh, the artist to do the drawing studies too as well. But if you're interested in that, look up Charles Bark, the Charles Bark plates as well. And I think that will help you understand a little bit of some of the stylings you get with uh, some of Van Gogh's uh, drawings as well. But a really beautiful rendering in charcoal, charcoal pencil probably most, most, li most likely of a young girl on some, you can see the texture on some, on some nice charcoal charcoal paper. And if you look at the Charles Bark plates, you'll understand this kind of underpinning, the angular measuring that those plates were known for. And the world famous postman uh, that Van Gogh not only knew and but also painted. And here we have a drawing, most, most likely in ink. And just the, the wonderful quality of this staccato uh, quilt-like hatching in the different directions, one way against the other. Really to me, uh, uh, kind of foreshadows Jasper Johns' cross-hatching techniques. I know that David Hockney has borrowed heavily from Van Gogh, certainly Picasso, but then you get to the rich use of broad ink and mark making in the head, the uh, eyebrow, the eyes, the nose, the lip, underturned lip, all of that. And this movement, this quality, can you see that sort of radial quality that he gets into? So all of it's kept in great control by the staccato brush movement. Perhaps he used a stylus, perhaps he used a bamboo stylus stick as well, but it was all kept in control and consistent. And we're gonna see this patterning um, that comes out in his drawings, and uh, not only in the figures, but also, I think, to even greater use in the landscapes. So we, hear, we see a gleaner here in charcoal, and I love the quality of leaning over this aged man working in the fields uh, all day long, Dutch clogs, and through here, these are quite large clogs. I don't know how big those normally were. I don't, I'm not an expert on that. Um, but this, the idea of the folding and the gathering and the turning, this is really quality draftsmanship, almost in the, the kind of hearkening the style of Malay. If you don't know the French artist Malay, who I believe was, came uh, was around the same time of, of Van Gogh, they might even know each other a little bit. But Malay was an excellent artist and a peasant and happy to be a peasant. The simplicity of the silhouetting of the head and the hat into that Beautiful, rich, dark, uh, dark charcoal tone, and again the cross, the hatching marks to signify turning of the form, and of course we see the lighting generally on the top. Uh, on in this particular drawing, you see that that quality as well. So another great, peculiar, and lovely study by Bingo. Series of studies of hands, and you get this the 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 understanding of of his understanding of, of drawing in form and what he was doing by exploring un, uh, like Cezanne uh, beyond form into some abstraction and we get this beautiful turning of line the digits of the fingers and the, the curvy linear approach to the fat pads of the fingers but they're beautifully kept we see the gesture beautifully in the rhythm of the fingers wonderful use of contour line softer some on the inside harder edges and then this beautiful painterly light, again, staccato use of turning the form across one another into a darker range. Of course, the middle, middle hand stands out, but the clasp uh, hand here, the fist here, the open kind of hand, you know, harkens back a little bit to Dewar's hands a little bit. And then just see how he keeps the rhythm a lot. He keeps it moving all the way through. Really think about... Um, when you're drawing this rhythm, these are not on the human body. We don't see these contour lines. So you've got these are made up and learned, studied, and borrowed and utilized for their own particular style. But they really turn the form and move the eye around the model and the figure. Even in the clasp hand, turning and then the upturn of the of the, the grasp of maybe a small locket or whatever. And lastly, the last couple images I want to show is of uh, Van Gogh's uh, still life sketches in ink and, and sometimes charcoal and the patterning that goes on. I think they rival 
the complexity and the uh, genius uh, uh, of the paintings, and we see the subtle hints of composition. You think it's just straight across. Well, sure, here's the horizon line, but what we really get is this beautiful turning in diagonals, and then we start to get this major diagonal. It starts to come this way, and all this patterning and styling starts to lead our eye from this beautiful kind of yucca type plant, if you will, over and through to the cypress type trees over here in the background. So let me take some of that off, that ugly red, and let you see it for your own. And so hopefully this will inspire you to go and look more at not only the paintings, which are, are, are very interesting in their own right, but also the drawing. So if you are in Amsterdam and you do get to the museum, I think on one of the upper floors, the drawing, the drawing and print room, and I spent quite a bit of time with some students there a few years back in the summer in May. It was 2018, 2019, and, and we looked quite a bit at some of these, the drawings. The rhythm of the mark making, the turning, stroking, and the patterning, the alleviation of too much detail into these uh, lovely kind of flower tops, the dark mark in making, it just, the vision is, is, is very solid and the architecture holds together also quite well. So it is a masterful uh, rendering and in ink of a landscape. And we get another one here is the upturn of a rocky sort of outcrop, a cliff, and we get this staccato kind of marks, like two or three and three or four, and it changes the rhythm. They're mimicked in the, in the birds here, right? And then we get the strong diagonal push, right, of everything from bottom right pushing up to the tree to top left. And what you also get is beautiful silhouette against a pretty much a open sky there, but it's the stroking, the mark making, and different various combinations and patterns, some thick, some longer and thinner, and then this beautiful uh, outcropping leads to the valley down below. So it is it's one of my favorite Van Gogh drawings to reproductions of to, to see and to, to study. And then having the birds, this, this slight little angle as they flutter upward is quite gorgeous too. And then lastly, we'll leave, leave off with, with this one, a lovely study in more of a fridge period. Later on, you can tell from the architecture, the hay bales and through here, and just the lovely layout of the composition. Again, I think these are just masterfully done. And it's like slightly two ink variations are one watered down with the lighter valued tones and these middle sort of tones. And then he gets darker full ink in some of these uh, darker tones. It looks like a female farm farmhand lady the architecture in the background, birds, and through their horizontal line for the valley there, the farm valley. Wonderful use of ladders to uh, move us around the composition. Strong diagonal with the darks. Those darks will lead you around here and here and really up and over, which is the focal point. This is right around in through that area. So let me take that off so we can see that in, in most of its glory. And the big thing to take out of some of this is, is um, pushing structure to the side somewhat to emphasize pattern for emotional response and you know really borrowing heavy from Impressionism to move into this patterning like structure of post-Impressionism, Pissarro, Gauguin uh, a little bit and, and uh, others, Cezanne if you will to uh, of course Cezanne pushed into uh, early early uh, Cubism and really helped Picasso push push that forward, but we get to see the beautiful rhythm and movement of pattern and, and still keeping in the tradition of recording um, one's environment in one's life, which would, would change in the, in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s with, with the in, invention of abstract expressionism. All right, there's Van Gogh in 15 minutes. You guys take care.